Welcome to another video. I'm Dave and this time we're going to write some Python. First off, let me apologize for this long silence. It all started with us moving to another place and right after that I became a father for the second time. And you can imagine, this really takes a chunk of your time. But at this point I can say we have truly arrived and it's time for some Houdini action again. And I re-enter the game with some Python. This Python file importer will be probably a bit too complex to cramp it into one video. So let's start with the first part. But first a disclaimer, this is not an introduction to Python. This is more of a showcase what you can do with Python. When I started to learn VEX, I very quickly stumbled upon its limitations, especially in terms of file management. That's just not what VEX is for. And that's when Python comes in. Let me show you what I mean. I prepared a folder with 15 Houdini BGEO files. Each file is an exported platonic solid with some color information. And for argument's sake, let's say this is a giant project with hundreds of files. How can I bring all of them into Houdini and implement them in one of your standard workflows? So let's first look at what we want to recreate with Python. When you want to bring in an object that you save to disk, you first take a geometry container and in here you create a file node. The file node takes a path where you can select one specific file, for example, the blue cube. To bring in all the other files, I would have to create another file node and each of them would select another file. Doing that by hand is tedious work. Work you don't want to do and that's why there's Python in Houdini, along other reasons, but more on that later. Let's take a look at the rest of the setup we want to generate with Python. We start with a simple grid, but all we need from this grid are its points. Those points we want to feed into a wrangle. In the wrangle we want to set the p scale, maybe later we make that random as well, because we also create random normals for the points. In my case this is more than enough, but keep in mind if you're feeding a vector with the rand function, all of the components only vary between 0 and 1. You don't get any negative values. As you can see all the normal guides are still facing roughly in the upwards direction. But again that's enough because I only want to have a little piece of vex coding in place that is later generated by Python. So the goal is to bring in all the available files and each one needs its own file node. All of those will be connected to a switch node. The switch will need an expression to choose one of the available nodes, but we will come to that later. The next step will be a copy to point swap. We are going to use the points of the grid with their randomized normals to copy one of the available files onto that point. Right now I only have one file node available which has selected the octahedron. And just for good measure at the end of this network I want to have a normal node that makes sure that all the geometry has clean normals. So that is what I want to create with one single click on a button. So let's get to it. Jump out of the network and delete it. Now I want to create the coding elements and the button itself on a null node right at the root obj layer. So let's start by editing the parameter interface. These nodes have quite a number of default parameters but we don't need any of them. So let's just turn all of them to invisible. What do we need? We need a file parameter, a button and several string parameters to write our coding. With the file parameter we want to select the folder where all of our files are. The button then will execute the script that we are going to write. And to have something to execute we are going to need a multi-line string parameter. In here we want to write the Python code. If you want the content of this text field highlighted like the language you are using, remember to set this parameter to the appropriate setting. So for the main coding part, that is Python. In the second string, I will have a very short VEX code. This is supposed to be the content of the one Wrangle node. 
And finally, the third string will contain the expression that we need for our switch node. And with that, our parameters are done. We can hit accept and we can start by setting the import path. Here I'm going to set that specific folder where all the relevant files are. I want to choose that folder in relation to where my current hip file is. So I click on the dollar hip folder on the bottom left. And from here, the folder I'm looking for is called objects. So this path right here where it says look in, that is the string I need in my import path. So I copy that, cancel this dialog and paste it right here. As I said, the purpose of this exercise is to generate everything we've seen so far with Python. To do that, I want to have a dedicated geometry container where the generated content will appear and I call it Python test. Now let's head over to our control node and fill the Python code with life. The very purpose of this tool is to handle file management on your operating system. To make that possible, you only have to import a Python module called OS. This will provide you with all the tools you need. Again, remember this is not an introduction, but I make it as clear as possible. First, I save a variable that contains the path to the objects folder. I can do that with the class HOU. This is the base class of all the Houdini nodes. With dot node and the parameter dot, I can address the node from which this code will be executed from. So in my case, the null node I called control. Then I want to grab the parameter import and with dot eval I can bring in the value of that parameter. Then I make use of my imported OS module. That module has a method called list dir and it will create an array containing all the file names. Then to create a quick check if that worked I'm going to print the content of folder. So I want to execute this code by hitting this button but as you can see nothing happens. Because at the moment this button is just an empty shell. To make it work we have to go back into the parameter interface and fill in the callback script for the button. So type in exec for execute, hue node for the current node, address the parameter that is called code and again use eval. And very important at this point make sure that this is turned to python. And if I now hit import, all the available files will be printed out in the console. So this is already working. Next, we want to create all the nodes that we need for this exercise. So let's start with the grid. You can create a new node by addressing the base class hue with the method node. And this time we'll provide the geometry container we created, Python test. And here we can use the method create node and simply provide the identifier name of the node you want to create. In this case, it's simply called grid. And as we discussed earlier, we also need a wrangle. The identifier to create a wrangle is trip wrangle. Then we need to create the copied point sop. And last but not least, all of that has to go into the for each block. The for each block makes it a bit more complicated because we need not only one, but two nodes. We need the begin and the end block. As you can see, I give the create node in this case a second parameter. This defines the caption of the node. And of course, we should not forget that we also need the switch node. Let's put it here right behind the wrangle. So let's test what we got so far by pressing the import button. We now created a bunch of nodes which have the same position in our network viewer. So let's press L to auto lay out these nodes and take a look what we got. We have the grid, the wrangle, the switch, the for each end and begin and the copied points up. Now obviously it's not enough to just create the nodes. With all nodes there's something under the surface that controls how these nodes work. And it's the most obvious with the begin and end blocks for the loop. When you create a for each block manually you can see how the nodes are connected. And that's the case because they already know the block path. And that makes sense. When you create a loop you need the end and begin node and they should work together. So it makes sense that these are the default values. But we created these nodes with our own custom Python code. There's nothing in place to give these parameters a default value. But that is what we have to do next. I hope you found this interesting and are back for the second part.
Ancestors. Then I try.